what is a sewing guide sheet? Almost every sewing project has instructions of some kind. Otherwise, how would you know where to start making your project or piece of clothing? Hi there, it's Miss Jones from Sew with Miss Jones. Let's take a look at the guide sheet that comes with the cartoon pillow from Start to Sew. If you're working in a classroom, it's important to put your name on your, on your guide sheet and on your individual pattern pieces. Others might be doing a project just like yours. That way we won't get things mixed up. It's always a good idea to read through the whole thing before you get started. Um, I've been sewing for a really long time and that's what I do every time I start something new. This guide sheet starts with some sewing suggestions which give general information you need to make your pillow. Some suggestions are different from how your teacher may want you to do the steps. Make sure you follow your teacher's instructions if they are different from what is written. This guide sheet has washing instructions. Read carefully. If you make your stitches way too big or if you don't knot your threads to start and stop, your project could fall apart and that would be pretty awful. Here's a glossary. Um, with a lot of vocabulary terms that you might not be familiar with. If so, you may want to either highlight or underline the terms you don't know. These might be explained somewhere else. You could ask someone who knows how to sew or you might have to Google the term. Just make sure you find the sewing definition, otherwise you could get more confused. Two Two very important terms are right side and wrong side of the fabric. The right side will show and the wrong side will be on the inside. With felt and plain woven fabric, it doesn't matter before the first stitch, but once you start sewing, it will make a difference. We want all the pretty parts on the outside or right side and the knots and the messy parts on the inside or wrong side. In this diagram, it's the dark part is the right side and the white part is the wrong side. There are a few more vocabulary words that you need to be familiar with. You will need every one of them. Your guide sheet might tell you how to place your pins. This one says to place your pins perpendicular to the cut edge of the fabric. I use perpendicular or right angled to do um, machine sewing, but I put my pins parallel on the inside of the cutting line and I usually place pins parallel to the edge when I'm doing hand sewing. I find this works for me. Never want to hit a pin with your scissors because it can really damage them. The guide sheet has these little boxes that you can check off as you complete a step. This will help you keep track of where you are. It gives you directions on how to trim your pattern. Um, make sure you use paper scissors. You don't want to use your fabric scissors, if at all possible, because paper will dull the blades and you don't want your pieces to look like they've been chewed. In later videos, I will show you how to prepare the pattern, lay out the pieces, and then cut out the parts of your project. There's some information about marking. I almost never mark like this because it can get really messy and could damage your project. I will show you an alternative way to make sure the pieces end up where they are supposed to go. But if your teacher asks you to do marking a different way, follow those instructions. She or he will be doing the best of the evaluation of your project, not me. Now, we finally get to the instructions of how to put things together. Make sure, make sure you pay close attention to where you should and where you should not do hand stitching. Some pieces get stacked on top of each other and you don't want the, the lumps on, of the previous stitching underneath. And I usually do the top layer onto the second layer before attaching to the body of the pillow. That way I'm only stitching through two layers instead of three. It's harder to get a needle through three. Become familiar with how different measurements look. I'm going to be talking about an eighth of an inch and a fourth of an inch the most. You may need to measure these at first to get your eyes used to what you should be seeing. Sometimes people will use um, their little, the size of their little finger to remind themselves how big or how far apart stitches should be. There are many different hand stitches. Several of them are explained in the guide sheet. Some are for attaching the pieces, some are for outlining pieces or making other lines. If you don't understand, check YouTube or your teacher's resources. Also, your teacher might suggest stitches that look just as good, but may be easier for a new stitcher. 
There's a label that you can put on uh, the back if you want, but it's optional. Then you will put the front and the back together and stitch almost all the way around the outside edge. Don't completely stitch your project closed because you need some space to put the stuffing in. After stuffing, the last thing that you're going to be doing is sewing up the hole where the stuffing went in. There's an evaluation sheet at the very end of this guide sheet because cartoon pillows are designed to be used by students in the classroom. Your teacher may use a different format for evaluating your work. So that's it, the guide sheet. It has lots of information for you. Don't lose it. It's really important. See you next time when we take a look at the pattern.